Everybody say hello to Adam McGoyan. Hi, hey, bud. Good to see you, man. How are you? Welcome back. Yeah, good to see you. Congratulations on the film. So what's the thing? How do you get connected to this story? Um, I got sent the script. You know, it's like really an unusual story because most of the time I generate my own projects, but this one came out of the blue and I read it and I was just stunned uh, by the possibilities. I, I, I knew about the story. I'd seen the original documentaries way back, um, but I just felt like it, I felt that this story is the stuff of mythology. Uh, because it's really, uh, you know, the story about these three kids who go into a forest in Arkansas and the next day they're found, like, naked, bound, mutilated, tied with their own shoelaces, like, meticulously, and there's absolutely not a shred of evidence. You know, the crime scene is completely clean. There's no DNA, there's no blood, there's no uh, footprints, like, like, not even a branch has been disturbed. So it's supernatural, you know, and, and this is happening in the, in the deep south and people are really religious mm -hmm. and they really believe that, you know, the devil is lurking everywhere. So this is a demonic act. So the question then becomes, well, who are the demons? Um, and they found um, perfect demons in this community. You know, this, this, these outsiders, this one kid who had a history of uh, mental health issues and um, they decided that these were the kids who must have done it. Well, they convicted them. And they convicted them. Right away. So and also we from the North tend to, especially when we're open hearted about it, tend to look at the South with a poetry. Yeah. There's, there's obviously bad history, but there's bad history everywhere. Yeah. But there's a poetry to that as well. Yeah. And that poetry is really clear when you're there. It's a very mysterious place. And it's not about, you know, we think it's about race, but it's not. The South is really about religion. Like that is the, you know, like it, it's this place that really believes in these notions of grace, um, uh, of, of how you should treat other people. Right. Uh, and also this sense of, um, of evil, of, of, of the devil. Well, and that comes from the blues, that comes from everything, true. right? Like, you know, like the devil is right there. And I think that's, a, that's because you're a kind soul, that's a beautiful way to put it. There's also a sense of mania, hysteria around the Jesus oh, thing. Oh yeah, there's that that's too. That's super dangerous. <laughs> and, oh, and that. Yeah, like here's a clip from one of, the, one of the greatest purveyors of the mania ever on television. Devil worship. <laughs> Exposing <know>. Satan's underground. <laughs> Whether a Satan exists is a matter of belief, but we are certain that Satanism exists. To some, it's a religion. To others, it's the practice of evil in the devil's name. It exists, and it's flourishing. So how do you tell that story, right, knowing that a whole bunch of people believe there's a devil? Well, here's the one thing that most people don't remember. It happened in Canada as well, right? It happened in Saskatchewan. With, uh, uh, there was a, a town where suddenly everyone felt that um, there was uh, Satan worship happening at uh, uh, a nursery. Mm -hmm. And like all these people were implicated, like, because this happened in Canada. I'm noticing you've got a skull on your finger and it's flipping me out. Why? So I think you are the devil. <laughs> yes. Because I, I think skull. I've been coaxed out here and that this is all some sort of satanic ploy. <laughs> and then the lights go dim and I'm like, oh, I, I just stand out here. No, no, like, why do you have a skull? Right? I mean, you're talking about Satan and you've got like a skull on you. Like, like, you're that? part because of the like, problem. Okay, right, okay. You're part of the problem. Sorry. The Rolling Stones, no, bro. Okay, okay. Keith okay, Richards, okay, okay. who right, maybe okay. is also the devil. Yeah, who do yeah, we know, right? Yeah. Well, it started with Robert Johnson, right? It, it sure did, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. that, that mythical selling your sure. soul to the devil yep. in that moment. The, um, the concept of justice, yeah. you've, you've obviously dealt with it in much of your work. It's a part of it. Did that attract you to the story? Of course. I mean, I'm really interested in, like, how do you determine truth and reality and, and, and what justice means. I mean, justice is very often what a society or a community needs to actually get back to work, you know, mm -hmm. that, that justice has been done. And that's the crazy thing about what happened in West Memphis, is that one of the reasons we couldn't shoot in West Memphis is that when you go there, you realize that they don't want to really deal with this issue anymore because it's closed. And as a matter of fact, a number of careers are based on the fact that these boys remain guilty in, 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 in the public perception. Right. You know, the judge, you know, went on to become a senator, the prosecutor went on, you know, to a high political office, and so their careers are based on that. So this is what I wondered about the three boys in general, not the three who died, but the three 
who were convicted. So if I read it right, two of the three were connected to this film as producers or something. Yeah. But Damien's not, and yeah. Damien's tweeted about it, and it wasn't a positive tweet. It no. was a bit, how do you like? What's going on with the three and you? Well, uh, I understand Damien's point of view. I mean, he has his own story to tell. Right. You know, and, and he read a, a, an early draft of the script where you know we were trying to show what the town must have believed he was like. And so we painted this uh, portrait of him, and, and, and he had a very visceral response against that because he felt he was being re-victimized. Yeah. Um, and so we, we toned that down. We actually we took that whole section out. In fact, when you watch you know, the film, yeah. you, there's no reason why any of the three should have a problem with it. No. Yeah. But, but, but I think that I understand like, why he had that problem. Right. So you were talking about horror and fear and the mania that can build around. You've also played a part in that, contributing to some of that culture. Take a look at this old piece. Oh, God. I missed you. I brought you some company. <laughs> so long, buddy. <laughs> so that's from Friday the 13th, right? Oh, my God. And listen, I, I, I can't believe you found that. That that is actually the single most traumatic uh, day of my shooting life. Do you know what about what happened? Well, because you're, you're, so, so you're like, a hero. Because now it is it CGI bees? Yeah. Those are real bees. Those are real bees. I was in the uh, cab because the cameraman did not want to actually get in the cab with real bees. So that bees eye point of view shot with the wide angle fish angle lens. Yeah. That's me. I grabbed the camera. I went in there. You know. <laughs> I told the actress to start screaming. And uh, I actually it was the only time in my life when I've actually had some sort of a nervous breakdown because I actually. I remember turning around <laughs> after I got the shot and seeing kind of the crew all, you know, in silhouette with these big arc lights. And the next thing I remember, someone was pulling me out of the car. And I actually had some sort of some meltdown because I yeah. couldn't reconcile what I wanted to be as an art film director with the fact that I was actually directing Friday the 13th. Right. So um, <laughs> that's how I made my living, you know? I mean, I directed the pilot of Friday the 13th, which went on to become a, like a, a yeah. big series. Absolutely. The film's called Devil's Knot, now playing. Adam <laughs> going, everybody. Oh, thank you. 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 Oh,